DK3, The Master Race, book one, just recently came out from DC Comics. It's also known as The Dark Knight 3. It's also known as The Dark Knight Returns Part 3. It's the third part in a trilogy of different stories that was written by Frank Miller back in the 1980s. The original Dark Knight Returns was one of my favorite stories that's ever been told on Batman. It was animated into a two-part movie that was really faithful to the original source material, with a couple exceptions here and there, but regardless of that, it was still done really well. The premise for this storyline is that it's set in the future. Batman is retired. Almost all of the superheroes on Earth have been forced into retirement. The second storyline sort of went more into that with some of the other heroes, but it focused mainly on Batman. The second series brought back some of the other former superheroes that were forced into retirement, or they were in prison. One of those characters was Ray Palmer, the Atom. He looks like he's going to be playing in a semi-important role in this upcoming storyline. A character that was introduced was Laura. She's the daughter of Wonder Woman and Superman. She's going to play a fairly important role in this upcoming story. She was probably the most coolest thing that came out of The Dark Knight Strikes Again, mainly because she's half Amazonian and she's half Kryptonian, but a total badass. She also looks like she's going to have some sort of semi-important role in the upcoming story, specifically with the shrunken city of Kandor. The city of Gotham is being brought back to the spotlight, along with Commissioner Yendel. She was Commissioner Gordon's replacement in the first series. The character of Carrie Kelly, who's the first female Robin, was introduced in The Dark Knight Returns. In the second storyline, she became Catgirl. In this storyline, she also looks like she's going to be playing a very important role. I don't want to say what that is because that would totally spoil the end of this story. But it is a pretty big revelation. I don't know whether or not it's completely truthful or not, but it is something that I'm interested to see how it's going to play out. Not too much transpired in this first issue except for setting the groundworks for the future issues. I think that the title The Master Race is going to be playing out somewhat with the city of Kandor and its people. Technically, all of the people of Kandor are just tiny Kryptonians. If they were to be enlarged to full size, they could be very, very dangerous. Although that storyline has been done several times in DC Comics, and I'm hoping that Frank Miller isn't just going to be repeating that. I have a lot of faith that he's going to be much more original, and this story is going to be completely all Frank Miller. The artwork in this was done by Andy Kubert, who he did a great job. Really good first issue. It draws you in, and I'm curious to find out about what's going to be happening after the big revelation that occurred at the end of this story. This is a DC comic book, so it's available at just about any comic book store anywhere, or if you want to go to their website and just buy it and download it from there, you can do that too. But anyways, that's it for now. Thank you guys for joining me in this comic book review, and I will join you in another one very soon. Peace.